Hi, we're here at the Proft Residence in Pollitt, and we're learning about composting 101. I'm Gloria Palmer, the Executive Director of Green Mountain Academy for Lifelong Learning, and we have Matt Proft as our guest speaker, and he's going to teach us everything he knows about composting. Then we had the issue of what do we do with this material. Um, uh, I didn't want to dump it in the woods anymore. Um, the state who assisted us in this process uh, said that we could either hire a renderer to come and pick it up um, and the other option was that we could compost it and um, the word hire didn't really sit well with me as a uh, you know youngster trying to make a living on the farm had enough challenges rather than spending money on that so we got into composting and um, I, that was sort of my first introduction to it I guess, in dealing with um, meat scraps. Now, that's not anything we're going to deal with on this size scale. I had a tractor. I had to buy a tractor. I had to bring in material to mix with um, the, the, the bird waste. And I needed quite a bit of it in order to cover and get rid of the odor and the smell. And um, by in order the reason do, the reason there is that if I didn't do a good job at it, I was still going to attract coyotes, so uh, or other vermin that were going to get into the into the uh, piles. And so, I guess my point there is that um, the volume of material required to do uh, composting seems to be the biggest challenge we face. Someone touched on that. Um, uh, having enough carbon uh, at the right time of the year. And uh, it's always a challenge and we have to get creative as to how we figure that out, um, where we find things. Um, I haven't, this is a brand new pen. See, I haven't done a really good job on it be, for some reason because I've got a critter coming in here and digging. I just started this last weekend. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a possum and um, I, I left it this way. Well, I was going to rake it up and throw it back in, which is what we'll do or I'll do. Um, but, you know, that's part of composting is, is trying to avoid situations like this and, um, or dealing with them when they do happen. Um, we talked about, uh, or I mentioned in the liner, uh, uh, from Gmall, what we're talking about today, and that's kitchen comp, kit, uh, composting uh, 101 from kitchen to garden. So I should just touch on what I do for composting because most of my smelly stuff is coming from the house, all, all the kitchen scraps that we have. And um, What I've started to do in the kitchen, uh, along with my five gallon pail, is to, um, any, uh, and I guess we should talk about what does go in and what doesn't go in. The, the, um, the biggest threat I see is the PLU labels on all the fruit and vegetables that we see. Most of the time they're plastic. Sometimes they're paper. I'm always checking them. I'm generally just pulling them off anyway. But those are annoying to see. And in the in, I did food scrap composting for six years with TIM, which is now Casella. And I'm guessing what compost, whoever saw compost out there, may be coming from that site. And uh, on a commercial scale, there's no way that they're able to screen out all that plastic that's coming through. And there's a lot that comes through. And it's really challenging when you've got so many sources to eliminate that. So it's, um, unless it's a farm compost based program uh, where there's one input and someone's watching over it, uh, it's probably going to have contamination. And contamination is our biggest challenge, both, both here in the kitchen as well as, you know, out there in the market looking for compost to buy. And compost to buy is hard to come by. The other question is, is it, is it uh, weed free? And, and that requires certain um, 
temperatures during the process, which we're not going to achieve at, in the backyard uh, either. But we're going to try to limit the weed situation by what we put in our compost, as opposed to um, trying to cook it to a point where it's going to kill all the weed seeds. Um, therefore, I stay away from hay for the most part, because hay has seeds in it. They're not bad seeds, but they're not really seeds that you want. Um, anything can go in the compost that's organic. The exceptions are, uh, as we talked about, pet, pet waste, and then you also want to stay away from anything coming off of golf courses. Um, golf courses also use some chemicals that are not generally out there in the public domain uh, uh, on farms, or et, cetera, et cetera, that are growing food. They're growing grass, and there's different restrictions or, or guides that they can follow. So um, they've got some pretty resilient herbicides that they use, which will just, what they say, will be persistent and um, continue to uh, act as herbicides against all your growth once you move that compost into the garden. And years ago, up in Burlington, there was an issue with that when a composter had um, gotten into some persistent herbicide, a new herbicide that was not um, um, had not been used uh, previously, as I say, new, and uh, it turned out to be pretty persistent and uh, got into quite a bit of difficulty as they were delivering a lot of this to homes and gardeners and uh, there was a big mess, but um, at any rate, people are watching things much more closely on the, in the compost world now than they used to. It's, it's, uh, it seems that we've come a long way with composting. Um, and it also seems that like my grandparents, who were born in the late 1800s, were doing this kind of thing and that, that we lost touch with it somehow. I remember there was a there was a dug can in the ground with a foot lever on it, and you'd go out from their house and you'd push the lever, and this lid would pop up, and you could throw all your food scraps in there, and someone would come around and collect that. And I'm not sure where that was going, if it was going to animal feed or whatnot, but it was all, you know, things got too simplified. Uh, with modernization and uh, and we got lazy uh, as Americans and just started throwing everything in the same pile and now we're in this situation where we got to get back to separating organics from trash because our landfill space is limited and that's especially true here in Vermont um, so I won't dwell on that too much so um, as I said um, Well, this is, uh, there's, there's, for what I do in the kitchen, and I'm going to, what I do in the kitchen now is I've taken to, uh, just taking the newspaper and, uh, and, and using it as my, um, catch-all, if you will, and I have my cutting board on top of it, and I'll just, uh, lay out my paper and, uh, you know, all my sh peels and so on that's not going into the soup pot, uh, will go right into the paper. And then I'll, you know, get a bunch of stuff in there. Then I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up in here and I'll throw it into my bucket. And what that does is it adds a little of um, dry matter or brown matter or carbon. And we haven't talked about carbon, nitrogen, and the, the requirements needed for composting. So that's finding enough of this or dry leaves um, um, or anything to mix in with our wet food. I've got shredded paper here, which I have a shredder now, and I am cautious about what I put in it. It's just strictly paper. Um, there's nothing in there on the inks that I'm worried about, um, but it's, it's a carbon like this newspaper, like the leaves. Um, straw, n another carbon, not cheap to come by. Um, but an excellent source of, um, of carbon in the garden because it also carries with it oxygen. Because if you think about straw, 
straw is essentially hollow, like the word straw. Um, and so that really sh should lead me to um, uh, what we need in order to compost. Um, there's, there's three things essentially that we need. We need the right diet, which is what I was alluding to, a, a, a carbon to nitrogen ratio. So the carbon to nitrogen ratio is sort of something you develop via a feel. And, and we'll get there, um, we'll, we'll try some things in, in, uh, today and mix up a little batch and um, try to understand what, what we're trying to achieve. Uh, if I had the right carbon to nitrogen ratio in this pile, I shouldn't have this, pos this mess here, okay? But I had such a, I, I took the scraps from the pork supper down at church last weekend. So I've got the, the, the Chinette paper plate, which is the only paper plate out there on the market that's suitable for composting in your backyard. Anything else has a plastic liner on it and you don't want anything to do with it. Um, and so I've got a lot of um, uh, those plates and I was just, I had a big bag of it and I just wanted to get it going and I didn't really take time to mix it. What I did is I layered it. I put down my paper plates and then I put in some compost from leftover from the winter and then I put down some more paper plates and a little pack uh, wheelbarrow full of weeds and uh, some of this uh, packing material here in the front. So that works really well when you layer things. If you go back in and turn it, it kind of gets it started and then you can turn it. I, I'm not really planning on going in here to turn this. Um, I don't discourage turning. Compost will yield what you put into it. My main goal is to get rid of my food scraps and produce something eventually down the road. If you want to have a system where you put in more energy, you'll reap more benefits in a shorter period of time. But as I say, I don't have time to turn. Um, um, if I had a bigger pile and a little more room um, and I had a tractor, then I would turn. But I'm not a fan of the pitchfork. You know, it's just, I don't know. So, I just we just got finished shoveling snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's not necessary. Turn it because that's what that's what's overwhelming for us is we're constantly trying to turn it. Uh huh. So we don't need to do that. So yes, it's a, it's such a relief to say, you know, you don't have to turn it. It's like, you you don't. You, this is your system. You create what you want. As I say, you'll possibly get back a quick. You'll get a quicker product. Because like I say, compost will happen by itself. We don't have to do anything. A little bit of involvement by make, making a mass, a pile here, will work. Um, uh, if I, you know, pulled up the wire and turned it and then set the wire up in another spot and filled that, then, you know, that, that's a little bit more energy, energy requiring. But I don't think it's bad to experiment with that. Um, but what's critical there too is is mass. You you got to have a, enough of a volume to um, to kind of create the environment because the outside is not really getting a whole lot of action. It's the interior that's really happening. So by turning, and here's the benefit of turning, you're mixing up the activity, and compost is happening. There's microbe microbes in the in the material. And what we're doing is we're creating a home for it um, to, to grow those microbes. And by turning it, we're mixing it up to get the outside dry stuff in with the wet stuff that's in the middle that's got all the microbial activity. So if you think about it like a beehive, the outside is kind of inactive. It's the wood that's containing the bees. But inside, there's a whole bunch of activity going on. And um, if we can mix that up and get some of the inside activity outside, we can, we can uh, enhance or promote a faster end, uh, uh, end product to, to the finished. For things like that, are there symbols, like these recyclable symbols, to show that it's compostable? Or just kind of... 
there, there, there's not, there's not much like that. And we'll talk about some ingredients uh, for sure. Um. What do you feel about? Um, I've been covering the compost pile because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to feed the weeds. I mean, I just get tons of weeds on the pile. Sure. And then that, that in itself, before I can put it in the garden, I have to pull out what whatever's been blown in on it. Right. Uh, am I compromising um, the composting by covering it? I, I wouldn't think so. Okay. Uh, uh, no. If it's getting moisture, is, uh, you know, rain's kind of important. Um, let me see. So, was it, yes? Um, when you compost your newspapers, do you have to worry about the colored, colored pages? Um, I, I, you know, I don't see it. Uh, no, this kind of color here. No, I, I don't. The pictures, I don't. The pictures, no. The, the no. glossy ads. The glossy ads. Even those, you know, I've seen a divergence from the glossy stuff. Even the flyers from the supermarkets, they're more papery. Um, which, uh, I, I stay away from that maybe because it's just an insert. You throw it in the recycling, that's fine. Um, I stick to the, the big sheet. The big sheet of whatever newspaper you've got or can get. It's it seems to be pretty quick. If you cover your compost with black plastic to create heat, does that help? No, because the the heat is coming from the microbial activity. It's the it's the um, the metabolism of the bugs that are in the compost. That's where the heat's coming from. So, um, and that brings me to we talked about carbon and the three ingredients that we need for um, composting, the, the right recipe, the right diet, or what I call the nitrogen carbon, the carbon nitrogen ratio. And I talked about that a little bit, but essentially we're looking for about 25 or 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. Now, every ingredient here has a different carbon to nitrogen ratio, if you will. Like chicken manure is going to have like a, a 500 parts nitrogen to one part carbon. Um, With wood chips, usually chicken, is, doesn't matter. Wood chips is a really high... I mean, wood chi a chicken... Mo uh, chicken manure is usually mixed with wood chips. Shavings? Yeah, shavings. Differentiate that because that's important. Okay. Yeah, because chips will stick around for a real long time. Okay. And, and um, we get them on the side of the road or wherever they're chipping wood. This, this pile behind me is uh, root, root grindings from some trees that we had taken down out front here. So it's, a, it's soil and roots and some of the stump itself. So it's going to be around a long time, um, but it's it'll rot, and you know, in three years, it'll it'll be pretty nice stuff. But I'll use it in pathways and such before before that. Yeah, shavings are great. So as soon as you add hay or sh or wood shavings to the chicken manure, then that may drop the nitrogen carbon ratio from 500 to one to maybe to 450 to one, depending on the the volume of the mix. But um, uh, leaves, dry leaves, are uh, probably, you know, five parts carbon to a half a part nitrogen. Very little, very, newspaper the same way. Very little action going on. Carbon, let's say carbon is browns. Carbon is newspaper. Carbon is paper. Carbon is leaves. Uh, it's that dry brown material. The nitrogen is the hot, the hot stuff, and chicken manure is like as hot as you can get um, uh, because of the nitrogen content. Uh, cow manure is is up there too, although it doesn't have as much nitrogen as chicken manure. So manures are very high in nitrogen. Um, horse manure is a good mix, and it's almost a 50-50 or a one-to-one -one blend because they're such a poor digester as a monogastric. Um, they, don't, they don't have um, the, the breakdown capacity that the cows do. So their manure, a lot of hay and dry matter gets through with the horse. Uh, so it's a great mix unto itself. Um, 
The other, uh, so the nitrogen carbon, and we'll talk more about that ratio. Uh, the other thing that we need is, is oxygen. And I talked about straw being great because it allows, uh, think, of, think of straw as something like this, you know, hollow. So it's going in here and it's allowing airflow as well um, as adding a, nit a carbon material. And the other thing we need is moisture. And, and right now, things are very dry. You can just feel it, you can see it here. I could really use some water on here, uh, I'm sure. Um, but I, well, I haven't had any, and I haven't brought the hose over, which I'm not opposed to doing. I mean, it's a lot easier than turning, is to water your compost pile. It's not something we need to do a lot here in the Northeast. But, you know, if, if, you're, if, you're, if we get into a dry spell in the summer, it's not a bad idea to help add some moisture. So nitrogen, carbon, one ingredient, oxygen, the other, and moisture, all required to create the right environment for the microbes to work in our pile. And, um, um, and, then, and then finding that right, mater right material or that right mix. We'll do a mix here in a minute, but uh, someone talked about what they do with a winter situation. So... This was an interesting, well, this was a typical winter. Up until, up until the end of December, it wasn't really that cold. I was bringing material out and throwing it into my um, box, my, my pallets over here. And we're gonna, we're gonna dig into that and see what that looks like. But that was being added to until December. And then January hit, and if I remember correctly, then we dove into minus, yeah. figures. For it was bulletproof. We, weeks I couldn't end, even walk out the back door. Weeks on end. Yeah. So I still had my five gallon pail in the kitchen and then I'd pack it down as hard as I could and um, when I couldn't pack it anymore I'd bring it out with a lid into the shed here and just store it. Now that gives me an end product or a, a, a product that's turned into something quite interesting I think. <laughs> This is, this is one. So it's, you know, it's already started to break down without me doing anything. But the frozen, the frozen ground, and actually it's not, this one isn't too bad. Yeah, I've had, I've had buckets that will come out and um, just pour water out. I might have another one in there. But, um, yeah, I'm not going to dump too much of this out. You see my clumps of, uh, this, I, I like what I see here. I see a lot of coffee. Um, yeah, but th that freezing really, uh, paper towel, uh, paper towel tubes. I throw in, uh, boxes. I'm gonna, I've got a little cardboard here. I make sure I've got the tape off. Looks like a, looks like a flat from a, six pack of uh, or 12 a case of uh, polar seltzer i'm just going to grab this other one it doesn't really smell so i don't have the moisture i was thinking of Am I yeah okay. yep. oh Whoa. Ooh, pretty colors put dessert i put yeah pits sure yep if it they're they're Pro they're going to come into the garden split in half, probably, or whole. Doesn't they're not going to hurt anything. Citrus. citrus is all good. Put it in. Yeah, it's. So what about coffee and the <coughs> filter? <coughs> coffee. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I'm not putting in my home compost is uh, meat products. Okay, I want to stay away from meat. Um, we've got a solution for them, but when I when I fill my five gallon pail, I'll take a bunch of newspaper in the clean pail and just put it in the bottom and then start filling it. And, and did I do it here? I've got some cardboard here. I've got some paper here. Something that just helped it come out a little bit easier. Now this is something that has been sitting, look at that. Even 
even at my house. <laughs> <laughs> That's my pet peeve. Joy. <laughs> Working in the garden. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> um, they don't. So uh, we were talking about what can go in here. Everything except meat. Um, no, no pet product or waste. Um, the pet stuff goes in the trash. The meat, we have an alternative over here. We have what we call a green cone. And we'll talk about that um, for bones and whatnot. Uh, but um, yeah, citrus, everything fruit and vegetable. There's no harm, it will go away. Uh, I've heard about citrus before. It was sort of a no-no, I think, it, I don't know why, but it's definitely, yeah, it, 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 it will break down, it'll yeah. go away, so yeah. Eggshells. eggshells, absolutely, yep. You might, you might, um, you might just um, break them, like break them in your hand instead of putting them in hole. Actually, you know what, put them in hole, they'll act as sort of a, what we call bulking density. So let's, maybe we'll get into that now and um, just try to put a mix together to get a feel for what things should look like. So um, you put it in your shed to, to elevate the temperature? Nope, all I'm doing, I put it in my shed when we got down to temperatures that were too cold for me to, you know, if I put stuff out here in the, in the minus degree days, it would just freeze and not, and it would be there, it would attract crows and critters and so on. So I wasn't really actively composting anything at that time. I had stopped putting things in there as it started to get really cold. And um, I'm just put it away until I could get to it uh, and mix up a lot of batches. And that's why I built this, because I'm gonna fill this up and I'm gonna put another light tier of wire on top of this That'll go up to here and I'll be dumping it in and I'll have this massive pile here. But that pile over there in the pallets was full up to the top. I mean, you can see it's a foot down in the center and you know, 18 inches down on the sides. So it's really not even, it's, it's shrunk. And that's, that's the thing, we get very little yield. You know, we lose 50% of the volume of our product as, as it breaks down, but that's our goal. Or our one of our goals. No bread or cheese. Um, cheese would go in the um, in the meat in the meat category. Dairy, yeah, I think I'll put milk in there if there's some milk, uh, but I would stay away from cheese. Um, anything fruit and vegetable, definite. Take off the labels. Um, um, the pets, no. Um, meat and dairy are getting thrown away. And actually the law says that if you're composting in your backyard, you get an exemption from throwing meat and dairy into your trash. Not that anyone's checking yet, but when it comes to that in 10 years or whatever, when you have to compost and you can't throw away organics, organic waste and they're, you know, they're using plastic, clear plastic garbage bags and the trash guys looking at it to make sure there's nothing in there. They're doing that over out in the West Coast in Oregon, I think. They'll, so, they look at your trash and they stick it with a label if it's got too much organic matter in it. God. I'm waiting for that day. Okay, the gray area, pizza. Pizza slices, pizza boxes. Who's throwing away pizza? Well, <laughs> you know, there's always one that doesn't eat the crust, okay? Yeah, you know, so. yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> But, you know, it's always been a gray area. They say you can't recycle pizza boxes because they they got oil. They get the grease. And I keep yeah. thinking there's something wrong with the system because there's so much pizza boxes. Yeah. Yeah. There are also yeah. some um, yeah. coating they put on the pizza <laughs> that's quite, it has chemicals on it. Oh, yeah, probably. Oh, oh, that paper, that paper in the pizza box is a no-no. That's, and I'm noticing, and I don't know for sure, but a lot of paper products, like either even shopping bags now, there may be more to them than just paper. Yeah, I think they put all kinds of chemicals, almost like, um, um, it's not always glossy, but it's the same idea. Yeah. So. In fact, that, that was one of the culprits that had contained uh, some of the 
PFOAs that were that's that piece of pizza that paper and the pizza because yeah. it was kind of slippery and but um, so that <coughs> anything that's not newspaper or authentic uh, egg egg boxes egg cartons are great I, I if they're not usable again I think they're great this is the same kind of material right here and it's very clear to me that this doesn't, and it doesn't have any label on it that I can see, Aaron. Uh, but I love this material and never throw it away. It's um, like a pressed paper slurry, isn't it? It's it yeah, yeah. It's like, like the egg carton, it's the same thing. And like the, the China paper plate, like I said, um, same, same thing uh, for the most part. A little more elegant, but there's, and you know, if you wanted to try a little uh, experiment, you could just light it and see how it burns. And um, you could either see, you know, a black smoke or even a dripping, like the like when you burn plastic, it'll drip. It has to be a pretty heavy concentration of plastic material to do that, but the black smoke and the odor from the smoke itself might tell you what is actually in there but um, <clears throat> yeah these things are are quite good um, but there's not a lot of packing material as he goes over to this this is one I just discovered kind of neat but um, this is from uh, I think what this does is is adding carbon and air of course when it gets wet it's um, when it gets wet, it's not going to hold up too much. But uh, it's not a. It's 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 an interesting um, alternative to peanuts. I thought it was fascinating. Um, Hubbard and Forge had this. No kidding. Yeah. Kind of neat. Well, it does have some kind of label, but it's been punched through, so you can't really. It looks like it's an an ink on there. Yeah. Is there a recyclable symbol on there? Yeah. Expos or something. Cool. So Matt, when you put use the five um, the buckets, you said you put paper. But then the stuff that you put in it, you still when you're in the kitchen, you yes, still. yes, I am. So I'm gonna just get rid of this because this is gonna take a little more to um, deal with. Um, and then I'm gonna use my buck my pile or my compost that just came out of the kitchen because it's going to be easier to mix when you think about this being here for the last three months or more. Um, it's just a, it's just harder to get the right mix. So that's when I, when I named this compost 101, compost 202 and compost 303, you're all going to achieve at home as you deal with your compost pile and learn the ins and outs and what it takes to make a good blend and what you find as results, what kind of results you get and what you learn to do and not to do. And it's always a, a learning process, I think, to fully understand what's, uh, what's going on. And it, 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 the more time you put in at it, the more, uh, the quicker you'll figure that out. But, um, so here's, I don't know what's in here. This is an old one, some citrus peel, and onions. Do you take the string on tea bags? Uh, I don't, I don't, don't worry about those little staples. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure about that string though, you know, not that I've seen it. Um, so there's a bunch of uh, paper towels. So see how, potatoes. See how this stuff is just much more light and fluffy. And um, that's what's coming out of the kitchen today as opposed to three months ago. So it's much easier to achieve a, um, a mix. I have a question about the string. The string? Yeah, because I've, I've heard you can compost like denim. Like fiber it's cotton. Yeah. Sure. So it's, it's like a salad. Yep. 
cotton, burlap, um, any, any, any natural fiber, I guess. Yeah, yeah, sure. Cotton is, is doable. Uh, it might take a while, yeah. <laughs> but it, it could it could go. You could also use it to lay it down as a as a mulch in a garden. It will rot in time, but it'll it'll go. Um, just like a a six pack. I've got I've got glue here on the corners. I'm not worried about the glue. I'm not really sure what it's made up of, but it's in you know not not enough to make me be con be concerned with it. I'm just gonna break that up a little bit. Yes, so um, I don't have any real trees that produce leaves anymore. They went away. I lost two in storms in the last year. And so um, I, <laughs> I was using this on another property, uh, this vacuum that sucks leaves up into a little pouch that you put on your shoulder. Our leaf blower does that. It has a reverse. Reverse. And then it has a bag. Yeah. So it mulches the leaves and puts it in the bag, and we put that on top of our raised beds in the winter. Well, you can see what that is there. That's that's gold, as far as I'm concerned. This is uh, this is the same thing three years later. Actually, this is full leaves. I don't think these were chopped. But isn't that, like, amazing? Yeah. Just There's nothing better... Uh, um, there's nothing better out there and just you know oh it's it's just you, you can't the leaves are what 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 the forests uh, the trees are giving us is just invaluable material trees. it's just incredible so i don't know if you're familiar with uh, dr johnson's suit the bioreactor that's all it is with leaves oh is that no i'm not uh-huh Le leaves are you know they'll do that so that pile came to me from uh, the guy that used to do my lawn and I just wanted it. He dropped it off here once. I think it's going to be three years this summer or this fall. So it's two and a half years old, and it's just sat out there forever. And and you know, same idea with this pile. It's it's a long game here. Composting is. It really is. I mean, and hopefully your piles aren't too big when you move. But um, <laughs> um. So I don't have, this bucket is not that full. You see, I put the first ingredients down. Where I, do you get these, where do you get buckets from um, like different people? Um, like how can you? You can get them at... Uh, Home Depot? You have to buy them, right? Home, yeah. 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 You can find them on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. 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 If, uh, and stop if you're, for every one of them. You can find food grade this? buckets, too. Food What's that? You can get food grade buckets. That yes, mm -hmm. you That's can. what we have. Uh, so if you... Um, if you're over in Chester, there's a place called Drew's Natural. Uh -huh. As you're going by through Chester on the way out of Chester towards 91, uh -huh. Drew's Natural's on your right. And if you drive up there, go around behind the back side of the factory, they have a dumpster. And they're, oh, cool. I'm going there today. They're, they're, yeah, you can take all you want. Um, so, so potatoes, eggs, carrots, cauliflower. Any bakery? Oh, okay. Usually a little shorter pail. Okay. Oh, neat. So this is a pretty dry mix, I've got to say, you know, as things go. So I could, in fact, maybe take some more of this stuff. Let's see, I got a lot of paper right there. It's a good smell, too. It, it doesn't smell... <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's not unpleasant. Right. right. Yeah, it's kind of citrusy. Um, it's very... There's those strings. That's not just string. That's <laughs> nylon tea bags. Oh, jeez. Oh, look at that. From your kitchen. Oh, I don't know how that could be. There's some rebel in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, this has been sitting here all winter, and it's not terrible really you know um this this is not really a big enough container to mix in um i've got a tarp over there i mean my 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 thing about here's a salt morton salt um so what do they call this chipboard um triscuits um 
any of those. Well, the, probably the best use for this is to recycle it, but the question is, will it ever get to the recycler? So because we're starved for carbon material like this, um, I'm happy to take that and put it in my compost pile. And I'll take a chisket box if I'm working and uh, if it's empty and, I'll, and if I'm working, I'll just uh, pack it with, you know, wrapped up newspaper full of compost and stuff it together and then put it in my bucket and, and use that sort of as a little container. But, um, you know, I don't really have to open up these, these uh, wrapped up newspapers. I'm just kind of curious what's in there, especially after finding the tea bags. <clears throat> um, some peanuts that I heard fell on the floor yesterday. So, so uh, the, the, the tarp is a, is a two person operation kind of, but if you have um, a tarp that you could lay this stuff out on, throw all your mix in there and then pick up two corners and roll it one way, put the corners back and pick up the other corners and roll it back. So it kind of gets this action going back and forth. It's like a cement mixer. It's, uh, you know, I, I, the better mix you can get, the less of this you're gonna get because I would have had that all incorporated. And I don't think I had enough nitrogen in here either, even though those paper plates were pretty much pure. I'm sorry, I didn't have enough carbon in here. Uh, um, even though those paper plates were all there, they're, they're kind of in, in big pieces. The smaller the particle, like the chopped leaves as opposed to full size leaves, although that's just a poor example. The smaller the particle, um, the better the mix I get, the better interaction. So I want to do like shake and bake. I want to coat all that wet, um, smelly stuff with a little bit of uh, leaf material or, or paper or something so I can uh, kind of start absorbing some of that odor and that moisture and, 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 and get the um, get the process going, give the, get the right environment. It's all about, again, the right environment for the microbes. The better the mix, the faster the microbes are going to develop and grow and, and move in there. So this is, this is, you see how this is, it's kind of light and airy, but it's definitely got some bulk to it, some mass to it. I, I like this mix a lot. So do you save everything in the mix before putting it in the pile every time? Well, I, I generally come out, throw it on top, throw some, a car, my food bucket in there, throw some leaves or, or um, weed, you know, a bucket of weeds from the garden that are still green that haven't seeded. And I'll throw them on top and I'll mix them around, uh, maybe throw some cardboard. I'll take a whole sheet of cardboard and put it right on top. And then maybe put the leaves, the, the weeds on. And that just kind of keeps it from being exposed to the outside, the animals, the crows that come in. You should it want to incorporate it a little bit. I don't want to see at the end of my my mixing session, and once I put put this all in to my pile, I don't really want to see food scraps exposed. I'm going to try to cover them up with um, some some material, either unfinished compost or I have rotten leaves over there from the yard last year um, mixed with grass that are hard to mix. They're really clumpy, but it would cover that up. Um, yeah, any, any um, again, uh, the cardboard isn't a bad solution. Um, and the staples in the cardboard, sometimes flats. I don't worry about those little staples either, even, even the copper ones. I've got avocado. Are avocados still two and a half dollars a piece? Yeah. Is there signs of too much carbon, too much nice like um, what, what to look out for? Too much moisture. Moisture is oozing out of the pile, which is not really what we're gonna see in this environment. 
um, would, would be probably too much nitrogen. Um, a lot of these things, uh, like, a, like a lemon or a banana, are going to release their water once they get into the pile and start to get microbial activity. So um, it's, uh, it, it's unlikely you'll see water ever coming out. It, it's, there's enough earth down below. To, to cover that. That's one thing we should talk about is we've got this system, we've got the, we should go over and dig into that. Let's do that. Let's see what we've got, see what we've got uh, as an end product, building a pile pretty much the same way I've done it here or by just throwing material on top. Too much carbon? I don't think it exists. I don't think it exists. Um, uh, it, it will it it will it will break down. Um, you're not going to have any ill effects from too much carbon. How's that? That's a better way to say it. But our challenge will always be to find enough carbon. And um, you know, if we're starting with leaves, they're going to break down fairly quickly, along with the other stuff. Let's dig into this, and uh, we'll see what we get here. So I, I just borrowed my buddy's tractor and came in here and I didn't make these piles by my hands and shovel. I just borrowed a tractor and did that and um, I had weeds over both of these piles. These were here when I came. Um, this, this pile right here, I took out, I had three bins of uh, compost, three smaller bins than this one that I'd been using right along and um, I just, they were getting overgrown and I just wanted to get rid of them. So I, I pulled them out. Um, that's the material that's left. It needs to be screened, which isn't, you know, impossible to do. I will do some of that too, but let's just, this is what I've been working on pretty much last summer up until the end of the year. And eventually the pallets go, go bad on you. So that's, I think that's crabgrass. I'm not going to put those roots back into my pile. Including that other ground cover that's with it too. Here. And I've caught a pet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I've got all of that. So this, the top stuff, you know, looks pretty composty or uh, up, you know, like what's coming out of our kitchen still. And as I get into this, and the outside, see this, the outside hasn't done a whole lot because it's on the outside. A lot of leaves there. And I came out here several times in the last, you know, three months of the year and said, oh, I'm never going to get much more in there. And I just kept adding and adding and adding. It just kept going down and down and down. So I'm into that a little bit. I'm going to pull the top off. I, I did put some poultry manure in here and I did get some heat. Not sure if that's warm for, see this is, you know, clumps of leaves. It's going to take a long time for that to break down because I'm not turning it until today. I'm going to have to do something with it. But, well, I'm going to have to restack it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make another one of these back here, shovel out some area to to rebuild, because this is kind of, this is showing signs of, you know, it's been here for a year and a half and it's, it could be reformed and then I could get rid of the grass growing around it. So I'm getting into the bottom here or into the very middle. Worms? Um, 
the worms will come naturally and um, I've, I've not done what they call vermiculture before where you have an actual container which you can do in the winter time as well. Um, who was talking about winter use? Yeah, vermiculture is fascinating I think. You have a container. I don't know how many you would need to get rid of a family of twos waste but they they do a fascinating job and I think that the the worm um, what what do they call it Casting? castings I think they're some of the best end product you can get I got a bag from a friend just like a one pound coffee bag and I put it on some of my house plants and it was unbelievable how they responded um, and and so that's something you could do in your basement and do it year round and then not have these five gallon pails. And in that case, I don't think you'd be adding paper. I don't know what they, I think they would just take the, the raw vegetable as is right out of your kitchen. But that's, I haven't done enough of that. I think it's a great option. Um, I would encourage if you've got any interest in that to check that out. Yeah, so it's, um, it's really essential for urban gardens where worms aren't just, you know, everything's paid where you really do have to introduce worms. Here, worms are just here, unless it's an absolute, it's a new development where they've taken all the topsoil away, stuff like that. But are y'all, y'all afraid of stuff over there? Come on over, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so um, if you can see, I'm getting this top layer off, which hasn't done a whole lot, but I'm getting down into some material here that's a little bit more soil-like. Mm -hmm. And um, when I talked about mass the other day, you know, there's something that's very not soil-like there. Is that a corn cob? Yeah, yeah. They, have a, they have a hard time. They do. <laughs> but uh, there's some uh, oyster shells. They don't do so well either. They're, they're not bad, but... Um, but this is definitely more composty but if you think about you know all the material that's around that and I don't know how much I mean we had to come down quite a quite a ways to get into that yeah. so all this stuff on the top is kind of the perimeter the, the mass that's kind of allowing that to happen so a bigger pile is that bigger not 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 very much in in the surface or uh, uh, on the base, it's not much bigger. It will be higher, uh, hopefully. Uh, I'll get it up to you know five and a half feet or so. But um, the more, the bigger your pile can be, the more of that action you've got going on. So this is really good. And the fact that now I've exposed all this stuff, these leaves here, to air. Oh, this is some of the turkey turkey manure, the poultry manure that I mentioned. And I did in fact get heat coming because the turkey manure had uh, wood shavings in it which is right there and and those are thin enough that they'll break down in a little over a year so they'll go into the soil in the garden if you're a year in with the, this material but they'll break down pretty quick and the fact that I've exposed that and aerating it and rebuild this it will it will um, be <sighs> I want to say, the stuff is rotted to a point, but it still looks like its original form. So it's on its way, and this agitation that we've just done is going to enhance that, that, that breakdown quite a bit, I would think. Um, the other style compost bins you see are like boxes that you would get, you know, from... I don't know, any hardware store, I guess. I'm not a big fan of those, but if you know, you're know you not producing that much, I mean, this is just two people here, um, but I am mixing the right amount of carbon in here to make it happen. Those I tend to see at houses where people are just getting rid of their food scraps and don't really add anything to it. So it could be kind of a fly attractant mess and if it's off in the side and no animals are bothering it and it's not bothering you it's a way to keep it out of the trash and that's a win 
but uh, I don't I don't recommend those systems. So many people have um, a little woods attached to their yard or as part of their property. I don't have that. My boundary is the right there. Uh, the what it, rhubarb. Thank you. So um, this is the kind of space that I'm left with and haven't taken on anymore. But if you've got a piece of forest land nearby and the other method you could do is just dump all your yard scraps, leaves. Maybe I'd stay, maybe I'd make two piles, one for brush and woody type material in one area and then your leaves and smaller uh, garden material that's coming out, you know, nothing that's too woody and put that all in a pile. And then you could go around with your bucket out of the kitchen and, you know, dig a hole into it. Wouldn't be as hard as this because this is more soil than leaves or whatever. And, 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 and dig a hole in there, throw your bucket in there, mix it all up with your fork, get it in, you know, a good foot or so, and then cover it back up with all the material. And, and then go around to the other side the next time you come out. And then go around, uh, you know, start at six, go to 12 and then nine, and use all the different facets on the clock. And by the time you come back to this one, it's probably pretty well cooked or, or broken down or to the point where it could probably use another shot of, uh, of your organic matter. So, so we've got this, the, the round screen, we've got what I just talked about, just a pile of leaves that are, you know, really simple, um, not a whole lot to it, and it gets the job done. And, and you know, you can go as, you know, there's all kinds of things out there online on how to build the ideal compost pile, where you're putting tubes underneath maybe to get oxygen, which, you know, is, oxygen's important. Um, it's all fabulous. This, this is a good example of, of the rot that's already happened. This is um, some of the same kind of cardboard that we have over there, but it's been sitting on the pile for a while. But when you, when you take it, it, it really breaks down pretty easily. Well, that section does. It, it, you know, it's not nearly as tough as the original product is because it's sat out in the weather and it's kind of broken down cardboard. It's got all kinds of work being done on it. So this is, this is good stuff to, I can sh spread it out a little bit. Okay. Um, oh, I was going to just, just uh, screen a tad. This needs work. That's fine, I'm come right in here. But I'm, uh, yeah, it needs, it needs another frame. Maybe, um, maybe a, this is a half inch, what they call hardware cloth. So half inch holes, maybe smaller than what you really need. You could get away with a, with a one inch, perhaps. And I have a shovel. Okay, this will work. So, Jerusalem artichokes, anyone? I think they're, I think they're great, but I don't. Um, and I think I'm going to do some sort of artwork with the shells at some point. But. Yeah, it's just too much. Yeah. I got it's it. It's going to be a really small pile, but. Well, you know what you could put a screen in your wheelbarrow. So, um, bark is something I use uh, because it's, it's a good bulking agent. Um, but anything like that, 
there's a piece of metal. Looks like a roofing, a roofing nail. So this pile's been around a little while. Um, the shells, they do, they do break down. I think they, not quite there yet. Um, and I put them in, I just let them go too. As I said, I was gonna, I don't know what I'll do with them. I'll try to put the bark back in, but there's, I don't know. What do you do with all this? It's almost fill something that you would take and put somewhere else. Um, I've got a fair amount of stone in here. So I don't know if I would, what I would do with that. But this is what we're after. And, and, and this, this is just stuff I'm top dressing the beds with. Um, still a little bit of wood that's getting through, but that's not the majority of material. And you go to any, any pile of, like I could, I could garner material out of this pile too, even though it's just mostly leaves and grass clippings from last year. Um, it'll, it'll shed through and certainly a bigger hose, a bigger uh, fence would allow more through. But again, this is um, homegrown compost. So it's, um, you know, it's gold, or gold. <laughs> it's probably got some weed seed in it, uh, but we do what we can. Like I'm not, like that grass chunk, I'm trying to not put that back into the pile because that crabgrass will really survive because we're not heating it to the point where it's going to cook those weed seeds or kill the roots either. So what I could do with this pile is I could um, haul it over to that other, that other pile and add to that. Do you, do you mix in um, um, ashes from your wood stove? Good question. Um, never in a compost. So what, uh, Food is very acidic. The compost process is a very acidic process. Um, ash is very basic. And so that counteracts the, it will kill off the microbes. Now wood ash is a great addition to your garden if you've taken a test, a soil sample, and discovered that it is uh, too acidic. You can add the wood ash and bring the pH up to where you need to be. So the way to apply that is uh, preferably on top of the snow um, during the winter. Um, and that way that snow counteracts the um, base, basicness of the ash because it, it's, it's so caustic, it'll kill a lot of the uh, microbes in your soil if you add it to the garden, uh, and which you don't. So you wanna, you wanna protect the soil, if you will, and all the living organisms within the soil. So try to avoid adding the, the um, wood ash uh, during the, the growing season. Okay. Yeah, and so the snow, it will melt with the snow and kind of get diluted into the soil. But that's a great question. Uh, I do have some wood ash over here. I didn't use any newspaper or any shredded paper. Let's talk about the green, the green, uh, what is it called? The green cone. Matt, do you have a local place where you would get your soil tested if you wanted to know? Uh, I, I think you can go through, let me, let's get everyone over here, I'll answer that. And a, a follow-up to that question, if, if your water is high in pH, is it safe to assume that your soil is as well? Yes. Okay. Yep. Definitely on the back. Um, question was uh, where to get the soil tested. I think. I don't think UVM does it anymore, but I think they'll take your sample and send it, last I knew, to U uh, the Maine. Oh. North Bennington um, Whitman's does well. If you take, it, if you take it to I'll them, take it. they'll... I've done that before. Okay. I'll take a little sample from each bed yep. and take it down there. Okay. So they'll provide that service too. They're sending it out most likely to... They just did it right there. I think oh. they just did that oh. thing that you can... Okay. It's probably not as extensive. Sure. As, but if, if it's some one thing you want to find out, yeah. This. They are. Yeah. Okay. I think they're sending it somewhere though. They might be. But but they'll they'll provide a box. It's local, somewhat local, and it's pretty quick. I think. Um, I just found this stuff the other day. 
and uh, I thought it was fascinating. It just kind of demonstrates, you know, compost happens, like I said, up front, and, and the trees are, are flowering now, just budding out, leafing out. They're shedding all kinds of organic matter into the soil. This is, um, I think these are husks from, I want to say a beech tree, but I didn't see a beech tree nearby. But I mean, if I had, um, if I had like a truckload of this stuff, I'd be happier than, you know, dry, uh, light, uh, bulky, um, added it to, to any, any mix. I just thought it was kind of fascinating stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's bud coverings. It's like what, when the flower, oh, it's what's around the, it's what the bud is all winter long until it pops so this, this time. that we have some of the messiest trees going. Yeah. <laughs> Our ducks are filled with. Them. Yeah. Like uh, right? the, the soft, the husk that come off the maple trees. Yeah. Before the, the seeds start growing. Mm-hmm. So much. Yeah. Of that. All that stuff. I mean, it's, it's, and it just goes into the yeah. soil and then it disappears, yeah. right? Yeah. Mother nature takes care of it. Oh, yeah. She's, she's recycling yeah. that back into the, into the earth and it's being used as, you know, the nutrition. Yeah. Oh, your other question was if you've got sweet water, you've got sweet soil, most likely. Okay. Yeah. Especially if you live under one of the only active marble quarries in the state. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so this is a, what they call the green cone or the boneyard, I'll call it, because this can handle any um, meat or dairy type scrap. And all it, it's not something you're going to harvest anything from, but what it does if, is that basket right there. I'm going to take that. This is, this is what's underground underneath it you know, buried in the soil in contact with the earth. And that's sitting on top and it's a, a two, two cones that are solar activated. So this wants to go into an area that gets some sun because the sun comes in and gets trapped between the two cones here and circulates down and works the micro there's microbial activity in the bottom of this too as i say this is sitting earth earth the buried up to here um, and it will last almost forever and as it's not something you're going to recoup material from but it's a way to get rid of your bones and dairy without having critter issues or um or uh, critter issues, what was the other? Oh, or having to put them into your, a, a bear? Yeah, I, um, yeah, no, these, these have worked fairly well from what I've seen. And uh, it just helps you have to keep your hat from having to throw that stuff in the garbage. It's an alternative if you're composting to, um, you know, just being a little more Zero waste. So you, so you, you do know like you a gigantic that. hole in the ground to, and then stick to that fit that out. basket in. Yep, this goes just below the soil line. That sits on it, gets screwed into it, and uh, yeah, and it's all all right there. Would you put your meat fats and stuff in there? Yeah, so all the you could okay. pour all that right in there. Okay, sure. Where do you get that, and how much do you know? Um, funny you should ask, Jeff. I do. I ha I think they're 120 bucks. Uh, I mean, you should look online. Um, I, I ordered ten. I installed a couple, um, but I've got I've got several here um, as well. And I just haven't put one in yet, but I I think I'd like to find a spot for it. Um, and because I I do have that other stuff occasionally. Sure, we all do. So um, the one thing I didn't mention. Not sure if we should go back there now. Um, the fact that that 35 percent of all food is wasted in this country—have you heard that fact? Yeah. Hmm. So we've got it pretty good here um, in the Northeast in terms of being able to compost. Um, moisture being a key ingredient to the whole process. If we were in Arizona or the Southwest somewhere, we'd have to be adding moisture 
Uh, and in fact, in that region, uh, commercial compost operations do cover their, their piles with plastic, huge piles, you know, here to the house and beyond, um, just to keep the moisture in the pile. And then they're forcing air into it uh, in order to give it the oxygen that it's not getting just naturally. But um, it's, it's, we're in a pretty good spot um, to, as I say, make this stuff happen naturally. But, um, and making me think about that pile that we just cut into. I think I might just try to pull all the sides and the top off into one pile and put all that center dirt on top on the outside. And uh, I bet that just that movement of itself will make that shrink incredibly quickly. And maybe I can do something with it at the end of the end of the growing season. But I'm going to have to be diligent about keeping the weeds off of it because, especially this time of year until the middle of July, you know, there's just seed looking for opportunity, and that's going to be a great opportunity with that fertile, broken down soil on top of it there. Have you um, ever seen and heard of these pretty expensive sort of small contraptions that my next door neighbor has one that you, you make compost from your chickens, I mean, from your kitchen scraps, like. That. Well, you plug it into the wall? Yeah. No. I, I mean, what? Plug I, it into the wall? Yeah. Yeah, you know? I mean, I, I, I'm just, <laughs> you know, I, I, I just shoot. It's I mean, like okay. Bucks. Yeah, and, and so, like I said, the more energy you put into it, the faster you get your finished product. Yeah. That's taking it to a level that's a little head scratching, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, 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 too, I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have. But, you know, here we live in the country too. Yeah. What are they doing in the city? Uh, well, still, even cool. in the city, it's ridiculous. I don't think there is a middle ground. They do have this. I think they're just from Japan, where you put. Um, and I'm not really sure what exactly it is they put in this compost, but it's supposed to be for apartments and smaller areas. But it doesn't plug in. It does. It does not. Does not. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's got to be solutions. Yeah. Um, just think of the volume of food scraps coming out of a city. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's mind blowing. So you're spreading paper, is that just office paper? Yes. And I'm, the white paper, or the, I mean, years ago they used to say it had like dioxin or Right, there, yes, and so um, same with, yes. Um, when I was working with TAM, we started getting crane currency, which down in Dalton, Massachusetts, they make the U.S. dollar, along with other currencies throughout the, country, the world. But um, dioxins was a big issue with that. And of recent, well, I don't know how recently, they've started to use pretty much chlorine to do that, to take care of the, whatever it was the dioxin was doing. So it then became compostable without the residuals of the dioxin. So these inks there, I believe they're all vegetable based now. They're pretty harmless. And uh, so I don't use any envelopes that have windows in them, you know, the, the see-through, yeah. I don't know what that all is. Um, but yeah, and the only thing is, you know, when you use this on a windy day, you know you were, you know you were there, you know, because you can't, you can't get rid of it all. I'm going to say, too, this mix that we made is a little dry. It's, it's too dry. <clears throat> Did anyone notice how like it was just shedding a lot of material as I think about this stuff flying around. Um, we're going to get some water tomorrow and once this stuff gets wet it's not going to really release its water too much. You know it's you know your, your bush is growing next to your house. Uh, once those leaves come on um, we're, we're, at a, we're at a high fire danger now because the leaves are not quite covering the forest floor so that stuff in the woods is a lot like this leaf matter. But once the leaves come on, um, my friend, the county forester, Jim Watt, used to say that Vermont is a seasonal rainforest. And we are, because once we get the leaves on the trees and we get a rain, that floor might dry on the upper surface, but you dig down under the first couple of leaves and it's wet and it's not going to burn uh, at all. So, And speaking of forests, um, if you have a forest, uh, or, or a woodlot, if you will. Um, I've 
heard of people, and I've thought about doing it myself. I've never done it. But if you go out, um, and this is more of a gardening thing, you can go out and take a bag and find a rotted log and harvest some of that. You know, you touch a log and it kind of crumbles into like sawdust. That's a great addition to your garden. Um, it's not something you want to do on a large scale, but uh, I mean, it, and, and you know, and nowadays people are talking about keeping wood in the in the forest. You know, whole tree chipping of trees is taking a lot of carbon out of the forest ecosystem, as opposed to leaving all the tops of the trees after a logging operation, um, which is always thought to be ugly, it's actually good for the forest because you're leaving a lot of the nutrients to rot back down into the earth. But as I was saying, you don't want to, you know, clear up the forest of all of its rotten logs, but a little bit here and there is a, is a great addition to your, to your garden. It's sort of like the slow, the slow made compost, if you will. It's taken years for that tree to rot to that point. The garden. Oh, is that what they, where they bury the wood yeah. into? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we just, just mound it with logs and then eventually just decompose it. Mm -hmm. So then we're planting on top of it and it's constantly just getting the moisture and mm -hmm. nutrition. Is mm -hmm. it true that you don't have to water that garden? No, you can't. Have, you know, I, mean, I have friends who do it in the desert. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's that's the roots go down. Yeah. So, um, Questions on systems in terms of what you're using now or want to use for what, what what's at home? I've heard that you should add um, like grass clippings or you can. Would that be just like adding organic matter? That's a high nitrogen, which, we, which is a great addition. Uh, I would never throw grass clippings away, but I think most most of them are now being returned to the lawn as opposed to being collected. Mm. One of the best mixes that you can get for a compost pile, which will cook kind of like horse manure, is uh, the fall leaf cover on the lawn. Not when it's like, not your first raking when you take off that massive collection of leaves, but the next one maybe the grass hasn't grown a lot, but there's still grass there. Mm -hmm. And you go out with your lawnmower and your catcher, yeah. and that combination of that green nitrogen-rich grass and the chopped leaves like that mixed together—it's the perfect moisture, and it, it'll it'll heat up overnight. I, I think that there's some phenomenal soil at the end of our driveway over the last 20 years of them mm -hmm. throwing that over there. Oh, wanna, oh yeah. I want to. I, that in a place where I can get to it. Well, you want to go back and get it. Yeah. If it's not too far down there. That's, the, there's piles like that. There's, po yeah. hire somebody. <laughs> it's valuable. I, I'm, you should just get out and explore it, see what you got. I, you know, I've always wanted to do that, and then our neighbor just plows it. He just keeps plowing yeah. it. <laughs> there are, yeah, are, so. There are reservoirs of that out there, like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You actually have one right over there, standing on it. It's, it's leafy, kind of in tall grass. It's like a leftover. You can't. You, it's right on the right side of where you put up your screen. Oh, okay. And it's just yummy stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just if you took a rake to it, you could get a basket of uh, really nice. Pr pr probably some of the leaf and grass that was from last year, and the, the grass just grew right through it. Yeah. It's really yeah. Yummy stuff. yeah. You know. It's yeah, and these piles, if I don't, I was going to maybe cover some of these piles with black plastic to keep the weeds from growing on them. But, um, you know, everything requires some level of effort to, you know, keep it neat and tidy. And like I say, I haven't done a great job at that, but there's other things to do in life too. So do what you do what you can and, and, uh, do what you want with the compost situation, but um, I'm trying to think of what we have not touched on. Uh, do we want to mix some more piles? We could mix some of this wetter stuff. We could try the uh, plastic, the plastic roll. If anyone wants to, let's try that. 
Um, the, the pl yeah, because it, it would be easy to do right here. Well, maybe we'll use, we'll just open it this far on the other end too. There you go. That should do it. All right. Someone want to throw that down in the middle? We could, uh, we could add this grass from the mower right here. Amy, thank you. So, the mower, yeah. Oh, we could rip, we could rip this stuff up. There's two here. I usually wet mine. That's not a bad idea, yeah. Just gonna. Fritos. I know. Incredible. <laughs> I know, it's very personal, isn't it? Very personal. Absolutely, take a bunch, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to break this up. Do we have, we have some more leaves somewhere. Maybe one of those plastic bags. It's pretty yucky. Well, if you have something like leftover salad with vinegar and oil, can you throw it in? <laughs> oh, good. Let's just put some a couple of big handfuls on there. Huh. Where's that rake? There we are. Okay. I think, what do we, how, what's, does anyone have a feeling on this mix in terms of carbon to nitrogen? Lime is just like wood ash, so that's a not. Um, you might, you might add rock phosphate, but that I think is better to put right on the garden okay. as well, rather than delay it and getting to the garden where you want it. Oh. Yeah. Um, there's many, many ways, isn't there? Yes, there's yeah, yeah, many ways to skin a cat and compost. Yeah. But, um, I'm, I'm feeling like this is a little, actually we've got all that paper in there too. I think the moisture's good. Let's, let's try rolling it and see what we get. Is someone on this corner here? Marilyn, you want to grab that? Let's just come. If we're going to try to keep it from falling out. So you're going to have to pull a little further. Come, all, come on to the plastic here. Yeah. Come on to the plastic. I'm going to go this. I'm going to go back the other way. Okay. Let's go back. Coming the other way. Oh. 
I see some clumpage in there. Right. Smells acidic to me, doesn't it? Yeah. Ac acidic. Yep. All right. So, that's not, I don't think it's going to get a whole lot better than that. So I've got some of that wet stuff kind of covered up. That's gross. Really soft, but it's got stuff on it. It's got, you know, it's got some leaf covering it. Some of these clumps, they're okay. So you can't, you can, uh, can't really see food scraps. I got some orange there. For the most part, they're pretty well covered up, right? It's, it's got a nice feel to it in terms of weight. So I think we're ready to wait. It's just, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not it's, think of how light the leaves were. And so we've added to it uh, probably it's five times as heavy now as, right. not that five times is a number we're looking for, just that it's, right. it's, got some, it's got some food waste in here. As much energy as you want to put into it, you can get out. Okay, so let's... Um, Is that you? Stuff, just, yeah. just don't want to. Step on it. Yep, or step. We're going right into the bin. This is the real reason we're having this workshop. <laughs> yeah. So, can we? If I get this end. Someone can get that end just across from me. Yeah, and we're gonna just kind of throw that up over. Oh. Easier said than done. Okay, tarp's a little bigger than you need. But I love that, uh, and, and, and I'll rake up all this, and I'm going to throw that on, and then I'm going to maybe take some of those wet leaves that are back by the screener there and just cover that up a little bit. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about the possum. He's, I could live with him. We talked about bears, or someone mentioned yeah. bears. That's a very, uh, it's not uncommon, I guess I should say. Um, so the goal there would be never to attract them in the first place. Because as, as animals of um, convenience and um, routine, once they get a source, that they know about, it's really hard to break them of that. Um, so you really want to be diligent about uh, getting your mix started from the get-go and covering it up sufficiently uh, with with browns. Um, you know, get finding browns. When I was on the farm, I would go collect leaves on the side of the road. You know, people used to bag them. Um, um, I'd have relationships with a Sutton's place. I think his name is Frank. He raked all right across from you, raked all his leaves and put them in a bags. And I would come and take them and empty them. And I'd use them for bedding with the turkeys and the chickens, which is you know adding that nitrogen or the uh, the bird manure and then putting it in my compost eventually. So it served two purposes. But he he was like a regular provider, and um, I would go to get sawdust at uh, Manchester. Woodcraft is it or was now went to Granville is now not in business anymore but back in the old days that was like I'd, I'd just always be searching for 
some some carbon base to mix with my my poultry waste because I, I had so much. Um, so find a source of your your leaf matter and make sure you use enough of it. That's that's what we produce here in Vermont, you know, in abundance. Um, go rake the forest. <laughs> it's right there. I, I don't know. You you wouldn't need that much, but um, you, you do. It is it is an important component of this because uh, like one one bucket. While this this material we're taking out of the kitchen that I'm showing you here is maybe um, I don't know. It's like 150 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, the food scraps you'd be surprised is not, you're right. Um, it's, it, there's not that much nitrogen in, in the food scraps as much as you'd think. They're wet and stinky, but they're not as rich with nitrogen. And when you're starting to put newspaper and paper towels and boxes in there, um, they're gonna tend to um, dry that up and absorb that. So I'm, I'm surprised I wasn't getting water. I got water out of a couple buckets when I made this um, last week from a couple other buckets. I think I had six buckets in here from the winter. So from the beginning of January until, until uh, the beginning of May probably, um, I had, uh, what's that, four months? Six buckets about right, yeah. So why were you expecting water if there's enough carbon? Well, um, I, I, I just know when I, put, when I packed these things so tight and then I um, didn't have lids for all of them, so I'd put a bucket right on top of the compost. And at first it would be sitting right, right up here at the top. And then over time, that bucket, along with another one on top of it, were squeezing it down and, and just, it was, compressing all that material, all those, all the air pockets were getting, and the, and the water was kind of coming out, kind of like making sauerkraut. Yeah. Um, but there's a, uh, my goal with this, once I get it filled, let it sit, I have a feeling that if I, I have my posts on the outside, so, I'm hoping I can just pull my posts out. They're not really attached except with a little string on the outside fence. Pull my posts out, take off my, uh, I can unwrap my, my wire if I can't lift it off in a whole piece. And then that pile will kind of be sitting there. It'll slough off a little bit depending on how long it's been sitting there. But then I could set this back up uh, just next door and then I could turn it right into that pile. Um, the other scenario is to have a couple of boxes if you're not going to do it this way. Uh, or have another set of wires, another four posts and some wire on the left and do the same thing. You still, you still to access it, you've got to take it apart. Whereas with the pallet, you can pull down one side and access it. And you could have another box on the other side or a wire, a round wire, and, and shovel it into that. But it's... Um, that's the, the, the cycle, if you will, of these, um, these systems here. If I had a little more forest uh, land, I'd be on the edge of the forest. Sunshine is good for your compost. If you can be in an area where you do get some sun, that's not bad. The green cone definitely wants sun because that actually works with the sun. That, uh, heating that cone, helping to break down material in the bottom of that basket even in the coldest days uh, of winter with the sun out. Um, but um, I would, if I, if I had a little bit of woodland, I would maybe be right on the edge and, and maybe not even have any container um, and, and see what that, see what I can do there. But have enough material again to cover to avoid uh, issues with, with critters. And, and bears are the worst, but Possum, skunk, raccoon, they're all potentially out there. Um, and, and so you want to cover up the smell as best you can. 
and the faster, you know, this stuff is a lot smellier. The stuff that's been in the shed for four months is a lot smellier than what's coming out of the kitchen now. So it's, it's easier to do at this time of year um, to cover up that odor. But. Are you going to put, with the possum pulled out, are you going to put that back in or are you going to put it on top? It's going on top. It's going on top. Yep. And are you going to put a post there where he's pushed up that line? I might just let him keep going. eat and then keep clean up after him. That's the other thing about bears. They can do the turning for you. <laughs> However, <laughs> well, if you can, and if you can make a nice little pen for him that he'll feel comfortable in, he'll go in and turn it all up. But that, that doesn't always come out, work out in the end as well as it should or could. That, that's kind of, we live kind of right in the middle of the town. And that's my, my part of my trepidation is that if I make a big compost, which I want to, then the bears start coming along to get, well, they do now, every now and then. Mm -hmm. You know, would I be like the nasty neighbor <laughs> yes, <that's right. laughs> that brought all the bears back? Hmm. That woman. I mean, I've talked to other people who said they've never had their pile attacked by the bears, but mm -hmm. you know, we have had a, a neighborhood bear or two. Mm -hmm. What, na what neighborhood is this? So we live just in Spruce Street, up against the properties oh. that are on Center Hill, uh -huh. and up on, by the cemetery. Yeah. So the bears, I mean, we have a little herd of deer, which we love, that come on down and hang out with us. But yeah. um, the and bear will make his way, you know, he'll hit Highland, he'll hit down the street at uh, Spruce Brook, where they, I think they change their dumpsters now but yeah. they used to have a bear pile all the way up the hill oh dear yeah and um i know my son walked home from where he was working in town one night and he had a sub with him greeted the dogs on the back deck and here comes the bear because mm -hmm. like, i want him right in so i i really want to do this you know get out there and turn it because you know we we use a lot of dirt mm -hmm. in our gardens you know and in my gardens i have a lot of big barrels will like mm -hmm. plant stuff. And we have a soil reclamation area, which is really where we plant our squash. And so then we take all our pots and we dump our soil in there. Mm -hmm. And before we plant our squash, we mix it with um, like blood meal and mm -hmm. bone meal and different things and put it back in the pot so we're not rebuying it. And this would be a great addition instead of buying compost every year to yeah. put in. So, but I mean, we've had a bear that's taken the lid off the garbage and walked away with the garbage, and he's attacked the um, the grill. Oh, because uh, they like the yeah. yeah the grill, but never never the compost. Yeah, okay. interesting. Huh. Yeah. It's all about covering it up okay. with carbon, shredded. Yeah. Well, we have lots of leaves. Yeah, we have. And you have a mine, uh, a gold mine of material over the bank too. Over the bank, I yeah. know. If you don't want that, let me know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't. It's, I'm, it's worth I'm it. Have to redo you said you had a son? What? You said you had a son? <laughs> I have a 23 year old. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it's the one that is now doing the lawn because it's a hill. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, so we, we have an area where I, I envision I want it. And we did have a compost heap a few years ago. Uh, but it was just mostly grass and stuff. And so then when we went to develop that piece of land for a garden, we had like and soil that hmm. was there, and it was kind of one of these things. Mm -hmm. so. I just, I mean, I, I would love to dive into it. I just, and, and you just got to start, shot, and you and as I said, the rest will come to you as sure. you kind of dabble in it, and you'll learn so yeah. much just by yeah. playing we, around. We stop feeding the birds. All our neighbors have stopped feeding the birds, or they take their. Oh, yeah. Just, we just. It's a must. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, and you know. If you don't get sick of him ripping the iron off your posts and destroying hundreds of dollars of birds, it's just, yeah. we don't want the bear. Right. Yeah, best you, yeah, for sure. So we're just about done. Okay. It's 11 o'clock. All right. Any other questions, you can email me or email me, I think. Yeah. I'd be happy to follow up with any of you as you get into this more, hopefully. 
you're not turned off. Were you uh, joking earlier about 202 composting 303? That's are you gonna uh, let, no. us, let us go to work here and then learn more? I, I, what I what I had implied was trying to imply was that you'll learn those lessons as you dive into applying what you've seen here today and and trying to figure out you know what what's happening or what's not happening. I mean I. I I guess I'm happy with what I've got there. I've gotten rid of my food scraps. Number one, that's my goal. You know, they're there. Um, I, it's not nearly, and I've got that little, you know, if we really were to scrape all that dry um, leaf and cardboard and uh, chunky stuff away, we'd end up with, you know, maybe a couple of five gallon pails of that richer looking soil, which still isn't fully broken down. But, um, so, it's not a bad system, I guess, but it's got, you know, if I had turned that a couple times last year um, or into November, I might have better results, I, I think. Um, so, so, I as a what you're gonna what you're gonna gain gain from you know adding some of these techniques to your home system now, I think you'll get 202 and 303 you'll you'll achieve the credits for that those two courses on your own <laughs> thank you for saying that even mistakes you still come out with good yeah you know sure you know, not quite i mean you learned you're always learning mm -hmm. what it's going to do mm -hmm. and you still get something out of it. yeah so i might put stakes or mistakes you say I might put stakes in the ground yeah. even this fence looks like I don't know maybe it's not yeah it's lifted up a little bit here which which you know what I could do it's at the beginning stages I could pull it up now move it get my first mix eliminate potentially this problem right now and get off to a better start with it that's what I should do because it's not a big chore to do that right now the more I pile on top, the less likely it is I'm going to do that. So that's, and I just thought of that just now. So you, you, you just kind of. Can't you put concrete blocks around it so it's it's a barrier? Or you think in the possum it's going to tip it all, the block over? No, yeah. that's, I don't know. That gets involved. I'd like to have it, I'd like to have it work. How can I make it work with what I've got there right now? And I, th I think I could have done a better job mixing. Because as I said, I had a lot of material. I had those paper plates. I had, I had uh, two or three buckets from the winter that I used in here. So that's pretty smelly. And I didn't break it up or mix it the way we did that pile in the plastic right now. And that possum's doing his own mixing. Yes, he is. <laughs> and so it's not a big deal family. to clean so this up. It's not a skunk. Yes, you know? good. That's a positive. It's not a bear. Yeah. Uh, not, so. not a rat. Yeah. yeah. A rat one year. Say you're like, oh, I really. You know, um, this this diameter yeah. can probably handle a lot of single home accomplishment. If I got up, you know, every two feet of growth, maybe, then it might be worth moving the screen and and then throwing that stuff on the bottom and the heavier, the the more broken down stuff on top. So, however. It's going to take a long time, actually. I made this big. You can make these any size, of course. I've made them this big um, and really tall. Uh, and, and it was just a rental I was at for a little while, and, and it worked okay. Actually, I did have a bear. It was up on uh, lower, lower Snow Valley. Um, mm -hmm. it was, it was, it's bear country there, for sure. But anywhere it's bear country, really, mm -hmm. at this point. But so make it a little smaller, it's not as big a chore, really. And um, and move your move your posts and put the screen in and turn it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Matt. Certainly. Yeah, All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.